November 1990, Ottawa. Voice of Women, one of Canada's longest standing peace organizations, enters its fourth decade in the struggle for world peace. Their struggle began more than 30 years ago at a time when peace seemed a far-off prospect. The year is 1960 and the Cold War holds the East and West in the grip of a new ice age. Summit talks are being held in Paris to help melt some of the tensions between the superpowers. But the talks end abruptly with the news that an American spy plane has been shot down over Soviet territory. Soviet Premier Khrushchev storms out of the talks in a furor. The world seems to be moving ominously toward war, nuclear war. Good evening, Frank Willis. In the past seven days, We've walked in the shadow of nuclear annihilation, and as a result, tonight, the world is a different place. Air raid sirens across the country carried the sounds of nuclear warning into the homes of millions of Canadians. If missiles had really fallen, over two million Canadians would have been killed and many more injured. In Toronto, the Metropolitan Government's Emergency Measures Organization surveys subways and underground parking stations to determine whether they will provide fallout protection for the public. The sirens went off and people were to gather up their children and their pets and go down to their fallout shelter, which very few people had anyway. Our baby was just six months old, and I was appalled that we were playing at nuclear war instead of trying to find ways to solve our differences. I think women were, were desperate. They were, they were concerned. I think they realized that uh, how, how close the world came to a third, third world war already in 1960. And uh, I think that women felt very desperately that they must do something to stop it. The desperate fears of thousands of Canadian women are voiced by Lotta Dempsey of the Toronto Star. In her column, she challenges women to do something to prevent this nightmare. The response is dramatic. Scores of letters pour in from across the country. Dear Lotta Dempsey, I sincerely feel that organized womanhood throughout the world may eventually bring a halt to this madness called war. I know we've always hesitated to use our influence on world society and too long have kept to the back seat while our men prepare for our total annihilation and that of our children. The sneers of the men in my household about the ability of women to do any good in a world organization are met by my answer. Could we do any worse than you men have done? Lotta Dempsey, along with Helen Tucker, Josephine Davis and others, organizes a meeting of Canadian women for peace. Hundreds rally to the call and the voice of women is born. Many of our members are young mothers who have never joined anything before and who are now becoming vitally interested in world affairs through Voice of Women. We hope to expand internationally very soon by arranging a conference of the world's leading women to discuss world tension and to take a petition to the United Nations which will show that women everywhere, in spite of racial, political, religious differences, can say with a single voice, we are one human family and we, the women, are determined to live together in peace. The new decade is still under the influence of the McCarthy era. There is a strong fear of communism and a belief in military might. And the sexual revolution has not yet begun. For most people, the proper place for women is in the home, not in the affairs of state. But in spite of these social pressures, membership in the Voice of Women grows to 6,000 strong. And because of the times, you know, 1960, it was, uh, the Cold War was, was on. There had been the House Committee on American Activities. There, there had been the investigation in Canada. 
and and people were afraid to to speak out and to go on the street and and make people pay attention to you was was not an easy decision to make voice of women's concern for a peaceful world is urgent they organize local meetings hold public forums write to MPs, cabinet ministers, and newspapers. They network with other women around the world and talk with anyone who will listen. But their concerns seem to fall on deaf ears. Under pressure from the United States, Canada has already begun building bases to house nuclear weapons. Our opponents are watching to see if we in the West are divided. They take courage when we are. We must not let them be deceived or in doubt about our willingness to maintain our own freedom. We must make certain that nuclear weapons will continue to be available for the defense of the entire treaty area. Voice of Women is outraged that Canada is preparing to accept nuclear weapons. To demonstrate their opposition, they charter a train and send a large delegation of women to confront the politicians in Ottawa. C'est ça, vois-tu, un train, ça marche, hein, ça roule et ça, ça va loin. Hein? Le, le Canadien national s'est fondé pour euh, traverser le Canada. Alors, nous avions décidé de prendre un train et euh, nous sommes partis de Montréal et d'autres groupes de, nous ont rencontrés euh, au Parlement. Et c'est la première fois que des femmes, il euh, n'y avait même pas de femmes euh, canadiennes françaises qui étaient élues au Parlement en 1961-62. Alors, nous allions au Parlement parler au premier ministre David Berker, qui était conservateur. On avait peur qu'il qu équipe le Canada, comme les États-Unis, d'armes nucléaires. On voulait dire qu'on s'opposait à ça. Et ça demandait beaucoup de courage, parce que les hommes ne laissaient pas sortir leurs femmes dans le jour comme ça, surtout pour être contre les politiques des gouvernements. The delegation wants the government to declare Canada a non-nuclear country and to urge the United States to stop atmospheric testing of nuclear weapons. The politicians are non-committal but polite. The press, however, is outraged. There was something pathetically foolish about the appearance at the Parliament buildings in Ottawa the other day of a group of matrons styling themselves with a pompous and absurdly unappealing title of the voice of women. The voice of women is a fine example of a bunch of hens running around with their heads cut off. The world must pity this nation, fallen so low, with a government bedeviled by wailing women and afflicted with indecision. These women want the government to promise... This no letter is an answer to your warped editorial, no The Voice of Some Women. I say bravo to these wonderful, courageous women who stand up against the tide of popular opinion and condemn war of any sort. I suppose uh, it was considered radical because there was nothing else out there. We, uh, I think we were rather a conservative bunch myself. <laughs> but uh, it was threatening to some people's cherished views of the world and uh, that's hard to deal with for some people to, uh, to, to be questioned and, uh, and find that there are people out there that don't agree. If people think a trip to Ottawa is radical, there must be raised eyebrows when Vau decides in 1963 to go to Moscow. Going behind the Iron Curtain at the height of the Cold War is something that is just not done. But Vau members believe that Soviet women and women everywhere share their desire for peace. As one Vau member put it, we know there's no difference between washing a communist diaper and a capitalist one. We felt we must include everybody, and many people felt that to include the Russians in your, what you were talking about, that was, uh, there was something sub subversive about that. On the way to the Soviet Union, the delegation stops in 11 European capitals to meet with women and other peace groups. Their last stop is Moscow to attend an international congress where 7,000 women from 35 nations 
discuss strategies for international peace. Je suis revenu de Moscou de ce congrès là et j'étais très mal vu par tout mon milieu, mes, mes parents, mes, euh, mon, mes voisins, les curés de, de, de la rive sud, Longueuil, Boucherville où j'avais habité, disaient si Simone Chartrand convoque une réunion, même pas pour la voix des femmes, pour le comité d'école, parce que j'avais sept enfants aux études, n'y allez pas parce qu'elle a eu un voyage payé par le Parti communiste. Il n'y a pas un homme normal qui aurait laissé partir sa femme qui a sept enfants six semaines. Avec quel argent sinon payé par le Parti communiste? Or, je devais l'argent à la Caisse populaire. Insinuations against Voice of Women are commonplace. In the flurry of name-calling, a lot of the good work they're doing is lost. They campaigned successfully to have 1965 declared International Cooperation Year by the United Nations and raise a quarter of a million dollars for the Canadian Peace Research Institute. During the 1950s and early 60s, the United States and the Soviet Union test over 200 nuclear weapons. Most people are unaware that the radioactive fallout is causing global contamination of the food chain. We played a big part in the peace movement and bringing about an end to nuclear testing. Although originally motivated by the prospect of nuclear war, the outbreak of war in Vietnam causes Voice of Women to quickly shift focus to the very real and more pressing horrors occurring there. While adding their voices to the growing anti-war movement, VAU organizes humanitarian aid projects and expressions of solidarity with the Vietnamese people. To draw attention to the innocent victims of war, several members of the Voice of Women visit North Vietnam during the war. Past President Kay McPherson was one of those who went. In case I get to Hanoi and end up with a bomb on top of me, I want to put down one or two thoughts beforehand. I hope to be able to explain to other people how it must feel to be a woman in Vietnam today. Perhaps, if we can understand this better, it will make it impossible for us to forget, to ignore, or to stand aside while these terrible things are happening to people like us. If it is hard to imagine these things happening to hundreds of women we have never known, perhaps when it happens to someone closer to us, to one of us, it can become more real. Perhaps then we will resolve to do something about changing this dreadful situation. It's very simple and very difficult, but it is well worth living and dying for. In small groups across Canada, Voice of Women continues its work for a safe, just, and peaceful world. The goal has never changed, but the agenda has expanded to include many issues that they see as interrelated. Ending violence against women, working for a cleaner environment and the rights of Native people, halting arms production, and strengthening the United Nations. Many members have been with the organization since it began 30 years ago. Others have been drawn by its vision. Together they share the belief that change is possible. So I think that, uh, that we'll go on and I think that probably there's a better chance that people will see that there's no, there's no solution to any problem at the point of a gun. Uh, just in the way we solve problems. Uh, that is if we want a real solution. We are a gentle, angry people And we are singing, singing for our love